Sword Art Online Alicization anime is finally upon us and with an amazing one hour long episode. But first we'll talk about the Alicization opening itself, Adamas by Lisa. I actually planned to go over this opening in my episode 1 explained video but seeing how much content the OP covers I just had to separate it from the main episode video and include a spoiler warning as well. Hey everyone welcome to my channel it's me GamerTurk and this has been your spoiler disclaimer because oh boy we're gonna talk about some future content here with this amazing opening. It honestly became my favorite OP from the series, every single visual just serves a purpose in this sequence, callbacks, easter eggs, incredible hints at the future, everything you see in the OP is there for a purpose so let's get into it. We only have the opening with credits rolling over since it acted as the ending of episode 1 but the picture is still clear enough to see every single thing happening there. The opening sequence starts with a very reminiscent visual that you'll remember from Mother's Rosario arc, two swords spinning around changing the title card from episode Project Alicization into words Beginning. This reference from the first second is something that many people who are not familiar with the light novels will certainly miss. This is another reference to the fact that the story of Alicization is beginning right now in the anime. This is a direct reference to the first volume of the Alicization light novels titled Alicization Beginning, which is what this episode was adapted from. Chances are as we go through the novels this screen will be showcasing exactly which novel this series is adapting from right now. So for volume 10 in about 3 to 4 episodes probably or so, this will change into Alicization Running, then Alicization Turning, Alicization Rising and so on and on. Which is an incredibly neat detail for the light novel readers of course and you'll hear me referring to the light novels quite a lot in this video and if you're interested in reading them yourself you can find the Amazon affiliate links to the books down below in the description. The two swords you see spinning here are the blue rose sword that we have already seen in the first episode, the sword that Yuji will be using throughout the series and the black one named uh, the black one belonging to Kirito. It's the sword Kirito got forged by a blacksmith and unlike SAO or Alo, in Underworld one has to name the swords themselves. So Kirito glossing over this fact, the sword was referred to as the black one throughout almost half of this journey. With Kirito and Yujiro flashing on the screen for a short frame, it switches over to Alice as a kid on the left and as an integrity knight on the right serving the Axiom Church. Then the scene of the three kids running is straight out of the light novels, just outright a beautiful scene from where the Rulit trio are having fun times on the field during sunset. Right after the title card we get some truly deep lore visuals, we see a small village being founded by four specific people, the four Wrath employees that spent a long time establishing the culture of Underworld. As kids flash on screen one by one on film rolls, we see the village grow. After Kirito we see the village becoming more of a small town that has erected a church like building right in the middle. As Yujiro flashes on screen we see the town building walls around, when he disappears the town does change a lot with a huge time skip. In the middle we see a giant tower surrounded by walls as the town had turned into a city. The tower stands where the church used to and is the central location of the human empire at the heart of central capital Centoria. That tower is where the mysterious Axiom Church, the creator of the Taboo Index resides. We see four walls spreading across to the mountains far away and these walls separate the four empires in the human world. As the visuals keep moving, we see walls being built around the huge city as well to limit the growth of the city, finalizing the borders of the central capital Centoria, leading the human empire to spread around and create villages in the vast open space between the city and the end mountains you see in the far back. One of those villages is the town of Rulir where Kirito, Yujiro and Alice come from far into the north close to the mountains. As the Rulir trio appears on the screen we shift to Yujiro as both Kirito and Alice disappear both from the visual and Yujiro's life and his desperate attempt at clutching at something, someone, some idea, dream that he can't catch as he falls down alone powerless with the red seal on his eyes, preventing him from breaking free from his shackles, the taboo index. Zooming into his eye, we transition into what controls the taboo index, the Axiom Church, with their towers scaling high up into the sky as the camera shifts backwards to reveal this to be a screen instead with the Flocklight Simulator Underworld written on it 
as Kikoka Sejiro and Higa Takeru are absorbing the world. We see more character splash on screen, Klein, Sugua, Lisbeth, Shilika, Shinon, as we transition into the middle of the ocean to a gigantic pyramid-like building called the Ocean Turtle. This is where the military Japanese self-defense forces are working on Project Elicization to create the world's first bottom-up intelligence, essentially a true human mind. We see Asuna taking off her goggles on top of this gigantic building, looking into the vast ocean in front of her. Laughing Coffin logo gets plastered all over the screen suddenly with Paul and his mate Chopper clearly visible on the screen as he walks past with a red glow on his eyes. We cut to inside of the Axiom Church, the person who took the title, the administrator on the screen, as the camera zooms in on Quinella, the person ruling the Axiom Church. We transition into a light cube that holds the data of an individual flock light with the light cube ID 178579. While there is no confirmation for this in the light novels, but with the Alice coming on top of it as an overlay, I assume this is the cube in the entire light cube cluster where Alice's flock light is stored. And of course, with that, we switch over to the Golden Knight, Alice Synthesis 30, the Integrity Knight. We see a picture which is obviously from Shigemura Labs where all these developers that you know or will get to know in Elicization have graduated from along with their professor. Tetsuhiro Shigemura, the person behind Ogma and Ordinal Scale, Yuna's dad, is sitting on his comfy professor chair. The person on the top left is Sugo Nobuyuki, the villain of the fairy dance arc. On the right side we see Kayaba Akihiko and his love interest Kojiro Rinko that you will learn more about in the upcoming episodes. Bottom right we see Higa Takeru with his spiky hair. While the two other people are currently unknown, Seeing how everything in this OP has a purpose, they may be anime original characters or characters tied to Higa's backstory that will be expanded upon in the series, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see them sometime in the story. We cut to the SAO server cluster that Shigemura repurposed for Ordinal Scale. We see Kayaba Akiko having a happy moment with Rinko in the past, we see Aincrad flash on the screen for a second, then the image of a baby showcasing how artificial floodlights were created at Wrath. We see Higa sleeping at his desk, Yui emerging through a firewall symbolizing how much work she does in the background to assist the heroes in Elicization, Kayaba and Shigemura once again flash on the screen as we cut to Diva Yuna from Ordinal Scale. With all these showcases of Tetsuhiro Shigemura and the AI program Yuna, it's probably safe to assume that they will be important to the story at a certain point, which was one of the reasons why I delayed my Ordinal Scale recap video. And now. We get to the shots straight from the light novel, which I have to say as a light novel reader makes me just giggle inside with so much happiness. We see Kiruta and Yujo practicing their quote unquote sword dance at the Sword Mastery Academy, where residents of Underworld train to become soldiers, but because the human empire is such a peaceful place thanks to the taboo index, their training mostly consists of a let's say showcase like skill set very similar to a sword dance as I called earlier, much more than actual battle training. but. This visual cuts over to Kirito and Yujiro fighting against an Integrity Knight. Seems to be just a stand-in Integrity Knight though, as his visuals do not really match up with the Integrity Knights that we know by name. We get to see Kirito and Yujiro's trainee pages at the Sword Mastery Academy, Ronye with brown hair, Tisa with red respectively, as well as Kirito and Yujiro's elite disciples the year prior when they had first entered the Academy, Golgoroso, Yujiro's elite disciple, and Sortiliana Sarlut, Kirito's elite disciple. As the camera moves downwards, we get to see a huge hall and a little girl. While blurry, you can see that it's a huge place filled with books and bookshelves. This is the great library underneath the Axiom Church holding records of underworld history and is run by this cute girl called Cardinal. And if you made the connection between Cardinal and the Cardinal system, I can tell you that you are on the right track, but there's a whole lot more to that story once the anime gets there. We cut to Kirito in the middle of a garden, this is one of the most emotional scenes of the series in my opinion, during the time of Kirito's first year in the Sword Mastery Academy. You can see the light particles floating up from the flowers in the garden as Kirito watches the blue Zephilia flowers bloom in awe. Coming to the end we see Kirito and Yujo's handshake as they are leaving the town of Rulit to begin their journey, zooming out and watching them go on their ways. And last but not least, we get to see a mural on a wall or a ceiling. 
This is within Queen Ella's, the administrator's room, and showcases the gods of Underworld. On the left side, from bottom to top, we see the goddess of land, Terraria, the goddess of sun, Solus, and the goddess of creation, Stacia, which you may have noticed from the stat windows being called Stacia windows. On the right side, we have a soul entity. That is the god of darkness, Vector. God, I really hope the anime goes with the Yen Press translations and doesn't call him Vector. This mural is showcasing the underworld myth where Vecta was sealed away by the goddesses. And that brings us to the end of the Elicization opening as Kirito and Yuji sheath their sword and walk towards their dreams. Now if you don't want to wait for the anime and just want to read the stories, again, the Amazon affiliate links are in the description down below, but make sure to hit subscribe and the bell icons to get notified when I upload my Elicization Episode 1 Explained video sometime soon, hopefully not too late. Huge thanks to my patrons, Tiffany, Candle Shred and Bold Ulysses as usual, as well as the people at SAO Vikia for helping me, and I'll see you guys in the next one, take care.